Hey everyone, how's it going tonight? It is Wednesday, 6 p.m. CST, and we are up for another Facebook Live. So um, in the Single Mom Entrepreneurs group, um, it's, uh, oh, um, okay, so today's List Building 101. Uh, you've noticed on the upper corner, at least for me, it's this way, um, I put my link in to grab my freebie to kind of practice the principle of, uh, you know, encouraging people to grab my lead magnet and um, sign up for my um, email list. So with that, um, I don't know what your experience is with your email list, if you have one or if you've been neglecting one or if you don't feel like it's that important. I know with all the bells and whistles of social media, uh, what I found was that people that are, you know, they have a passion project or a side gig, they're not really treating it like a full business and they tend to neglect the actual email list and, and capturing leads that way and focus on, you know, building private Facebook groups or uh, fans or followers or whatever it is on social media platform. And so I kind of wanted to um, jump in and talk, like just sort of reignite the need or the passion for actually building your email list. And that means like collecting emails from your audience. So now why it's important that let's, oh, you know what? And maybe I'll talk a little bit about more um, the background and maybe my long-term experience with email lists because I think things have changed way back when, so say in 20, 2009, 2010, when I started business coaching and that may have been my first attempt. Yeah. At probably my own business and capturing emails that way. Um, prior to that though, I did work in for, like for nonprofit. I started off in knowledge communications, developing websites, but with that online network. So having an email list and actually listservs. If you guys remember listservs where you could, you could, um, you had like these little codes that you would respond and say, you know, and like subscribe me or unsubscribe or whatever it is. And then you would get all these threads of content coming into your inbox. So that was like, gosh, maybe like two year 2000, 2001. I don't know if you remember that, but I was actually one of those people that, um, facilitated those kinds of listservs, I believe we called them, right? And then, you know, I kind of got into um, my day jobs and um, with nonprofit. And what we did was when we were trying to create an online community, like an international online community, if we were to travel uh, like around the world to conferences, we would literally be sitting in the back of the room, calling people over and saying, and telling them, like collecting them, collecting their names and their email addresses and having to show them and walk them through either an online platform or to help them understand that, well, when we collect your email, we're going to be giving you some valuable information and whatnot. So kind of like gone through a bit of a journey with building an email list. And so when I started my own business, I knew how important building an email list was for your audience. But then, you know, I, I, I was very belly to belly. I went to networking events every like Wednesday and Friday. I collected business cards. And when I collected that business card, I would say, Hey, would you mind if I added you to my email list? And the majority in all honesty, that was how I collected emails and got their permission that way. Um, you know, with the rules, um, I mean, if any of you use MailChimp, you're probably familiar. They have the rules where they want you, they want that person to subscribe and then confirm their subscription so that they are not feeling like they're spammed. And Gmail is really good for monitoring spamming and all that kind of stuff. So when people are opting into your list, it's permission based. So permission and permission marketing is, you know, maybe a, a term if you're familiar with that, um, is, is the foundation of building your email list and then subsequently sending them newsletters or information or, or whatever it is. But now what, I, again, going back to the social media and how at the forefront it is and how we tend to build groups, followers on Insta, like groups in Facebook, followers on Instagram, uh, fan page uh, likes, uh, things like that. But, you know, and, or YouTube subscribers. So it doesn't necessarily reflect the value of your business if you, if they're not subscribing to your list and saying, hey, I want more of that particular content. Um, you know, if you guys are a part of um, certain groups or whatever, you know that you can visit them when you want to. 
um, you know, you unsubscribe, you subscribe to their email list as you kind of want to. So it shows your level of interest and you're not interest where maybe if you joined a group, then maybe you joined it two years ago and you don't even know that you're still a part of it. So it's really about having that kind of current list in front of you. So that is my maybe background to, you know, an email list, but I actually have um, nine points to share with you today. So number one, why are, is building an email list uh, important? So these are like the fundamentals of building an email list 101, an email based audience 101. So why is it important? Um, they say that the size of your list reflects the size of our income. So I say that's true to a certain point and I'm gonna get to quality right away, but that is really the size of your organization. And so while we may have a ton of followers on social media, if the social media shuts down, the idea is that if the social media goes away, it like say Facebook shuts down, Instagram shuts down, or something, some kind of platform switches to maybe the latest and the greatest. Maybe it's like everyone goes from Facebook to Instagram and then Facebook is kind of done with, then your organization or your clients don't come with you or your potential clients don't come with you. So um, email lists, on the other hand, can be retained and transfer from one platform to another quite easily. So um, it really is about, an, it really is an asset for your business. Um, and they have given you us permission to market to them and it, and ideally it's the right group of people to build a relationship with. So that's, there's a bit of self-selecting. Yes, I wanna hear more from you. Um, maybe you've targeted them in some way and they're becoming a part of your, of your audience. And evolving with you over time. I know for me, I have, um, I have a bit of a mix of an email list. Like I have people that have been following me or on my list since 2009, 2010. So some of them, it's not super relevant to them anymore. Um, and partly because they've shifted or partly because I've shifted in terms of my niche, right? So before I focused on solo entrepreneurs, so like just generally, um, and then now I'm specifically, um, serving single mom entrepreneurs, busy mom entrepreneurs, or, you know, f females anyways online um, that want to shift to a more automated way of building their business. So um, yet I have lots of males on my list and I have a lot of local entrepreneurs, solo entrepreneurs on my list. So, um, so for me, my list has evolved over time. So um, it's not a hundred percent my niche, but it's a decent list, right? It's a pretty good list. So uh, then, so that's where I was saying, just to close that off, build, you're building the relationship with the right people because they've selected to follow you and listen to you. Okay, point number two, uh, it's about being responsible with it. So a fundamental is being responsible with your email list, asking for permission, um, and if you have, so if you don't have a list already, and you want to start creating one, get all your friends and family's emails and whether it's from your Gmail contact um, information or like, you know, your, your contact book or um, Hotmail or whatever and start with that. And then your first email can be, hey, I'm adding you to my list. This is what I'm doing. If you don't want to be a part of this, then unsubscribe. So that's a kind of a really good way to get the uh, per permission if you're just starting out and you know, and it's also a nice way to kind of announce, Hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm launching this project. I'm starting this business and this is what I, I plan on offering. And here's my website and all that kind of stuff. So that's awesome. So really just about being responsible with it. And, and, um, and with that offering value and not being spammy. So nobody wants to be spammed. Um, and they're looking for education. They're looking for value. They're looking to, for answers to a question that they have. So try and offer value um, when you send those emails. Next, it's be consistent. So um, for a few reasons. So one, your audience may wanna know what they can expect and when. Um, and also if you're too inconsistent, then it's not effective. So if you're gonna be seen as sporadic, and I know I've, had, I've definitely had times in my business where, um, you know, as I made the transition to more online and toward the single mom niche, I wasn't really sure there was a time where I wasn't really sure what I was doing or uh, how I was going to maybe rebrand my business. So there was some sporadic moments there with my email list. And, um, and now that 
and it it just doesn't reflect well, right? So um, luckily they still continue to follow me and whatnot. But now I know what I'm doing and I know who I'm targeting and I know who I want to serve and what kind of impact I want to have. And then also based on my own experience, how I can best serve others. So um, so that's so basically being consistent, whether it's you know commit to one email a week, three emails a week, whatever it is, um, try to be consistent with them. And if you email them every single day, you may be overwhelming them, but it really depends on your audience and what they're looking for. Um, yeah, and then, okay, so number that's point number four, be consistent. Point number five, quality over quantity. So you can have a massive list, but if the quality of people aren't there, then it's not gonna be the most effective, awesome asset for your organization. So, um, so when you're inviting people to come in um, and subscribe to your list, then try to invite the people that you really want there and not so much the random, right? So, I mean, it is also, you know, going back to, it's also great to invite your friends and family to come and, you know, cause there's always referrals and there's whatnot and it's a really great start. But ultimately when you build your list, you really do want a good qualified, engaged audience that, um, can relate to the things that you're offering. Does that make sense? Okay, um, what next? Number six, be thoughtful and strategic of how you wanna use your list. So it goes back to the consistency and what you wanna do with it. So um, program launches, so an email list is really valuable when it comes to program, product, or service launches. Um, and launch campaigns. I don't just wanna talk about like, you know, the first newsletter, but the campaign. So when you're campaigning to launch a webinar, a training, um, a coaching, now you're doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and you want to launch that, um, a fitness challenge or whatever it is, you're probably going to be emailing them more like almost every day um, prior to that launch to get some traction and action on that. So you want to be use that uh, thoughtfully and strategically so that you're not always consistently launching, I guess, if you can put it that way. So that they're, when they see an influx of emails, they know that whether they're opening them or not, they know that something is going on and to kind of drive them to open up those emails. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, and then, and also in terms of being thoughtful and strategic, what do you wanna do with those emails? Do you want to um, offer more information? Is that like all you wanna do? Do you want to use them for program launches? Do you wanna use them to bring you back to a Facebook group, to subscribe to a podcast, to subscribe to your YouTube channel? Like what do you wanna use your, your email list for? Um, and if it's a newsletter, if it's informational, keep the main thing the main thing and then have you know a special purpose um, reasons for emailing your audience. And number seven, so which brings me back to lead magnets. Um, to, in order to build a quality list or quality audience, um, then you wanna have a nice relevant lead magnet that shows who the document is for or the freebie, whatever it is. It could be a video series, it could be um, a PDF, a toolkit, a book, um, an audio book or an audio um, series of training. Or um, So you want to make sure that it is it shows who you're serving and for what problem it's going to solve so that you're bringing so that, you know, so for example, mine is um, three shifts single mom entrepreneurs must make. So um, it's clear that the audience is single mom entrepreneurs and um, and how to shift in their business to accommodate them. So in solving that particular problem. And that will help build your more quality list because they've showed an interest in that particular topic and they've identified with that title, if that makes sense. Okay, um, so then that, maybe that brings me to number eight, which is the how to's and what's working for me now. So what is working for me now? So um, lately, so I do posts, right? And when, and um, and I will say, you know, do some kind of posts and say, hey, grab my freebie on this stuff, right? So that's one way to do it. And that's kind of a simple way. I've seen people do it really consistently, like all the time, grab my freebie, grab my freebie on their fan page as like a, an over and over again. And that's, and that's fine. You can do that. Um, I've been doing light Facebook ad posts. So if I do a post uh, to either grab my freebie or other things, um, 
I'll give it a boost with um, the boost is kind of like um, if you're familiar with the Facebook ads, there's like a more formal ad and then there's like a boost for just page likes or post engagements or those kinds of things. And that's been really helpful with um, bringing more people into my organization. Um, webinars are really great for lead capture. People love training and, and videos and whatnot. And I'm just finding webinars like whenever I launch a webinar, um, it's really impactful in terms of uh, bringing people into my email list. Like it's, it's actually, it was actually quite surprising for me when I started and I started doing this about last spring and, um, and the influx of, um, of people coming onto my mailing list and subscribing just from the webinar was, was wonderful. Like it was a really nice surprising thing. So I'm going to continue to do webinars and then offer training and offer value and all that kind of stuff. So, um, that's been really great. Video series has worked well for me. So a five video crash course has done, you know, well for me with, um, giving people value, but then also bringing them onto my list and then being able to, um, engage them, uh, that way. So, and then today actually is a good example. I'm pairing it with a lot alive. I'm, I don't know which way the, the box is, but I'm pairing it with a live and I'm saying, Hey, grab my freebie. It's three shifts to you, three shifts. You must make, um, that single mom entrepreneurs must make. So if that resonates with you and you're not already, you have not already grabbed my freebie, definitely grab the freebie on, um, you know, in the, in the description of this, uh, Facebook live today. So, uh, and I will probably do some kind of video on my fan page today or share this particular video. Um, once I upload it to YouTube and then put it on my fan page with a link to grab my freebie. So that is what I have for you today. It was a bit longer, like, um, I'm a Facebook live. I really hope you found it valuable. Um, Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight and uh, we will catch you next time.